in a somewhat unexpected turn of events, in the Western Conference semifinals, we'll have the second seeded Phoenix Suns taking on the third seeded Denver Nuggets. The Phoenix Suns managed to beat the defending champions Los Angeles Lakers in six games. My prediction was that the Lakers would beat the Suns in six games, but the result was the exact opposite. Going into the series, I figured everyone would be healthy and in the end the Lakers would win it, and it all looked that way. After three games, the Lakers were up 2-1 in the series, but then Anthony Davis got injured, LeBron couldn't carry the team and role players who were missing shot after shot, and Devin Booker made sure that the Lakers wouldn't win another game. In the end, Phoenix moves on and the Lakers go home. Devin Booker averaged almost 30 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists. DeAndre Ayton shot almost 80% from the field and ended up averaging 15 and 10. Cameron Payne stepped in nicely for Chris Paul while he was struggling with his shoulder and speaking of Chris Paul, the effect he's had on this team is amazing. Against one of the best defenses this year, Phoenix managed to score 104 points per game, which ranked as the 12th best result out of 16 teams. As a team, they converted on almost 46% of their field goals and 36% of their threes. Defensively, they held the Lakers to just 97.5 points per game, which was the second best roll throughout the first round. They allowed their opponents to convert on just 41% of their field goals and 29.9% of their threes. Great work on defense. As for their opponents, the Denver Nuggets also managed to beat the Portland Trailblazers in 6 games. My prediction was 6 games, and it really came true. Denver lost the first game in the series, but managed to climb back to a 2-1 lead. After 4 games the score was tied, and in the end, Denver won their next home game and clinched the series on the road. Even without Jamal Murray, they were the superior team here. Jokic has been great throughout the season, and he was great in this series. Jokic averaged 33-10 and 10 on 50-40-90 splits. Michael Porter also joined Jokic in the 50-40-90 club. He averaged almost 19 points and 7 rebounds. The whole team contributed to this win. As a team, Denver averaged 120.8 points per game, which is great, but we have to take into consideration the awful defense of the Portland Trailblazers. They converted on more than 47% of their field goals and 40% of their threes. Defensively, the Nuggets allowed their first round opponent to score 119.5 points per game, good for the 13th best result out of 16 teams. They also allowed 47.5% field goals and 41.3% three-pointers, the second worst result in the first round. During the regular season, both teams met three times. Phoenix won one game on the road and lost both home games in overtime. So it was really, really close between these two even in the regular season. One of the keys in this series is Chris Paul's health. We had a chance to witness, at least for short spurts, how Phoenix looks with and without Chris Paul. Yes, Cameron Payne filled his role well, but you can't really replace Chris Paul's presence on the court. These extra few days of rest can prove to be critical when it comes to his health. Yes, he probably will have to play through some sort of pain for the rest of these playoffs, but if he can stay at least somewhat healthy during the series, it gives Denver a lot of trouble. And so does Devin Booker. Facundo Campazzo most likely will guard Chris Paul. That leaves the assignment of guarding one of the best scorers in the NBA in the hands of Austin Rivers. Rivers hasn't always been the best defender, but he's fitting nicely in Denver. He ranked as one of the worst defenders from guards in the first round, but he also had the daunting task of guarding Lillard and McCollum. That's no easy task. Well, and it doesn't get any easier with Booker. So Booker will have his chance to dominate the series. Can Rivers make some key defensive plays in key moments? That could be a very important factor in the series. Phoenix will have to figure out the way to stop Denver's bigs, especially Jokic. Aiton did a great job in the series versus Lakers, but with Anthony Davis limited, he really didn't experience a fully healthy MVP caliber big. Jokic is that, and more. This season's MVP really has been awesome so far, and it will be a heavy task for the young big. But Aiton is also coming off a confidence boosting series, and during the season, he did pretty well defending Jokic. He will have to avoid foul trouble at all costs, because if that happens, Jokic will go off. I think Aiton might be the biggest key in this series as far as player vs player matchups go. Jokic will get his regardless, but if Aiton can limit at least one facet of Jokic's skill set, the Suns have a much better chance to win this series. 
Probably one of the most anticipated player matchups is Michael Bridges vs Michael Porter Jr. Not only were both drafted in the 2018 NBA Draft, but both also play the same position and Bridges might be the best defender on the Suns. He's too small to guard Jokic, but he might have the perfect combination of size and athleticism to guard the Nuggets secondary scorer. All he needs to do is contest the shots. Porter converted 60% of his wide open 3 pointers and only 30% with tight defense. It's a tough task for Bridges, but the one he is very capable of doing. If that doesn't work out, you can always throw Jay Crowder in the mix, who by the end of the series versus Lakers, got into his groove shooting wise. Crowder though most likely will have to deal with Aaron Gordon, who is closer to his size. When Denver lost Jamal Murray for the season, most people, including me, thought that Denver's gonna fold. It's just that great of a loss. And the Nuggets still managed to hold it together. The talent level in this series is on Phoenix side. The Suns also have a tough defense who can deal with some of the best Nuggets players. That's where the bench comes in. I think Phoenix has the edge in this aspect as well. During the regular season, the Suns bench scored 37 points per game, good for the 14th best result in the league. Meanwhile, the Nuggets bench scored only 32.2 points, good for 27th in the league. Monte Morris and Cameron Payne will lead both benches, but going deeper, I think Phoenix has more options that can contribute to their team's results. And let's not forget Torrey Craig, who is an ex-Nugget, knows the system and plays that Denver likes to execute and matches up well with Denver's bigs coming off the bench. Overall, this series should be very fun to watch. Denver has the advantages on their front court, while Phoenix could punish them with their superior backcourt and second unit. This will be a great battle, and after the series versus Lakers, I'm a believer. I believe the Suns are a very good team and a better team than Denver, who in this series will feel the effect of not having Jamal Murray. So I believe the Suns will win the series in 6 games, 4-2 and the Suns move on to the Western Conference Finals. What is your prediction for this series guys? Who wins it? Who will be the best player in this series? Please leave your predictions down below. Don't forget to like the video, share it with others and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. This is Purple Prince and I'm out.